how do you survive your first year as a new loan officer? The statistics is that the majority of loan officers when they first start off do not last within their first two years. And the reason being is because when you first start off in real estate, whether you are doing loans or whether you are doing real estate, is it's very hard. People say that the first two years is the hardest. So let's get into this video. Focus on your sphere of influence. And I know a lot of people say that your sphere of influence is so important is because the people that you have, and when I say sphere of influence, I'm talking about people that you have in your phone as your contact list. I'm talking about people you have on social media, Facebook, Instagram, your personal social medias. People that you've been friends with or following or interacting with for years. So let's say you've been on social media for a a long time for 10 years you have you had a Facebook and you have children and you have family you have events you posted all of these things people that have, are friends with you on social media have seen you grow up have seen you elevate have seen you make mistakes have, maybe have children maybe get married maybe get divorced they've seen you in so many different stages of your life the reason why I say it's so important to focus on them is because that is probably a way that you can get your first deal is by letting people know what you do that you know personally so if you tell them you make a post on social media you say hey I'm doing home loans hey I'm in real estate these people are gonna be the first to gravitate towards you how do you do that so what I would recommend when you first get your license and first pass your test or get your license approved you could take a headshot photos and you could post a picture and say I do home loans that's literally all I did was I posted I do home loans and then people will start to congratulate you and then if people want a home loan they will reach out to you in the comments. They will comment. You'll start to see people give you comments and you may even get people reach out to you in your um, inbox, messenger on Facebook. If you're not necessarily on social media at the time, you do wanna go through your contact list and see there's people that you have in your phone that you could just reach out to and say, hey, hey John, just wanted to let you know I got my loan officer's license. I could do home loans. If you have any questions about the home buying process, let me know. Or you could even offer, hey, John, I'm doing, a, I'm a loan officer and I'm doing free home buyers consultations. Just want to let you know, if you're interested, let me know. You definitely want to let your people that you know, that know you, that trust you, know what you do, so that way they could spread the word. And even if they don't want to buy, they may know somebody that wants to buy. And they may have, they may have friends or family members you that want to buy. to want to get training. At the end of the day, you especially if you work for a broker like if you work for a retail bank then it may not be as extensive as it is if you work for a broker but if you work for a broker you are working with multiple different lenders that you have access to use so if you're working with multiple different lenders then you're gonna have to know all of the guidelines First, you're gonna to have to know your guidelines, your FHA, your VA, your conventional, how, whatever loan type you do, you're gonna to wanna to know the guidelines, the standard guidelines. And then you're also gonna to wanna to know each lender that you work with, they have their own guidelines and their own overlays. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you know those. Being up to par with your training is going to ensure that you know what you're doing. Because if you don't know what you're doing, then you could really mess up somebody's loan. Everybody depends on you. Whenever you get a contract and you have somebody, you're doing a loan, it all relies on the lending part. So if the lending part falls apart, then there's so many people that is gonna fall out as a result of that. There's the real estate agent's not gonna get paid, the title rep's not gonna get paid, like nobody's gonna get paid and everybody's gonna be upset. So you wanna make sure that you have training. If you work for a company, they may have somebody there that is an office manager that may be able to help you. You have an office manager, you may have a top producing loan officers that is able to help you and train you. When I first started, I was very fortunate to to be able to shadow a top producing loan officer. If you are working for a broker, then more than likely your the lenders that you work with, they all have their own portals and they all have their own trainings. So you can reach out to each lender and ask if they have training. I have a lender that I work with, one of my, the main lenders that I work with, they have a big headquarters where you could go fly out to and go to training and they will train you there on multiple different things about being a loan officer another place where you can get training that i did that really has helped me honestly don't even sleep on it is youtube there's a couple of people that i've watched when i from when i first got my license to now and they've been helping me significantly the main people that i have watched so far is sales remastered i literally started watching him when i first before i even got my license 
and he has really really good content and my camera is about to die so if it dies i'm gonna just start recording on my phone some um there is some real estate guys that i watch as well i like his name is brandon Militant or something like that i'll tag his name also in this video brandon i also like ricky caruth those two guys are real estate guys but still you can learn stuff with real estate people as well because it goes hand in hand you're still doing the same activities so those guys i watched um who else oh the mo the loan officer podcast I love them. They they are great. Like they have good content. There's a lot of different resources out there. There's even like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, like all of the websites, they have their guidelines, they have training on those websites, free training. There is another place too that I um, went as well. It's called MGIC. They have really good training as well. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of different places where you can get free training, but also there's places where you can get paid training. One place that I do know, not sponsored by them, is going to be um, Zenix. They have loan officer training. So if you are new to the industry and you want training, I do recommend that you probably do get training. You know, they have guideline books too that you can read as well. Um, guideline books can be found online. You can print those out. It, they do have a lot of pages to it so if you want to print it out make sure you know you have enough pages for it because it is a lot to print out but there is training and you're going to want to know your training also because there's going to be times when you're out in the public or you may be at an open house or if you're calling agents and your or agents know are reaching out to you they're going to ask you questions what loan programs do you have how much do you have to put down what first time home buyers programs out there are there so you're gonna want to know those answers want to know what you're talking about you want people to know to feel like okay if i do send her a lead if i do send this person a deal are they even going to know what to do to say to the client are they going to know how to handle the client are they going to know what questions to answer are they going to know how to answer these questions so those all come into play as far as how successful you are going to be as a thing that we're going to talk about is don't take things too personal you cannot take things too personal it's going to be times where you will spend hours you're going to spend days you're going to spend time working with somebody and they may go to another lender and buy through that lender just because they may have went to someone else in the beginning doesn't mean that you will not work with them in the future so keep a positive outlook focus on networking so networking is pretty much going out telling people what you do getting acquainted with people and getting out there there are going to be a lot of networking events so there may be real estate agents that have events that, even if it's community events you're going to want to go and network get people to see you get people to know you go to those events you don't want to go with the intention of oh i'm gonna get a lead or oh, i'm gonna get somebody to work with me you really just go just to put yourself out there so what i would do is i would go to events like they would have real estate events and i would just go and just introduce myself to people hi my name is versi i'm a loan officer how's it going and each time you go to an event you will see people that you saw at the last event so i have actually gotten leads and closed loans based off of networking before so it definitely does work one thing i will say though is that you don't want to focus all of your efforts on networking there are multiple different ways that you are able to be successful and you want to focus on a couple of those things so you don't want to always just go in a hundred percent network only and not prospect or not make phone calls or do anything like that but it is something that you want to incorporate in your daily activities you know maybe pick to go to one event a week and just start there you definitely want to integrate yourself in your community you want to focus on getting your systems down packed when i say systems down packed i'm referring to when you first get your license the main thing that we're that you are concerned about is how to get a lead how to get a client how to get a loan okay once you get the loan what do you do how are you going to retain that client how are you going to follow up with that client what are the systems that you're going to have in place that's going to help you to get that client from the moment you talk to them for the first time until the moment that you close them on their home loan a lot of times when you first speak to somebody the likelihood of a person you speaking to them the very first day and they're ready to buy right then and there they have everything ready to go right then and there 
and you closing them within 30 days is very unlikely. A lot of people that you talk to are going to need your assistance, meaning they're gonna need your credit repair expertise, they're gonna need guidance, they're gonna need you to work with them and give them information. They're not gonna be ready to buy right then and there. Focusing on income generating activities. I went to, when I first got my license, I went to this conference that this real estate agent person was holding and he had a thing that he said that he does and he basically when he's coaching someone or when he's working with someone on his real estate team that he basically tells them to do these things in order to be successful so the thing that you want to focus on every day is you want to focus on he said do five income generating activities every single day on what are the things that i'm going to do that's going to help me generate income i'm going to give you a couple of examples of some things that will help you do that which reaching out to your sphere of influence reaching out to referral partners for example real estate agents insurance agents cpas financial advisors credit repair people doing open houses is an income generating activity because you are getting leads cold calling is an income generating activity so anything that you're gonna do that could potentially generate you income whether it be right then and there or in the long run working on applications getting applications that is all income generating generating activities one of the most important things that i could say that will help you is focusing on getting building relationships with your referral partners that is something that you can use to generate income but yes you do want to focus on your income generating activities something else you want to focus on is going to be creating your schedule and sticking with it there is not going to be a specific person unless you work for a co certain company but there's not really going to be someone that's going to say hey come into the office today hey make your calls today hey do this today everything you're going to have to be self-motivated you are going to have to be self-motivated and you are going to be have to be the one that wants this more than anything